Hey guys, this lesson is on projectile motion, and projectile motion isn't that different than just the motion we were just doing. It's just uh, sometimes student motion, sometimes, and we incorporate uh, gravity a lot instead of having like a controlled acceleration, like a car engine running. So let's say we have some guy here, and he has a ball that he's throwing up with 20 meters per second of velocity. And we want to find how far or where the ball is um, after two seconds and four seconds. All right. So uh, how are we going to do this? We have. We just need to use our kinematics equations. So if you remember from our last lesson, uh, these are them. So in this one, we're going to say, oh, you know, we don't have enough units, but in this one, we need to remember that gravity is an acceleration, and the only acceleration working on that. So gravity is uh, usually put as 9.8 meters per second squared. In this case, we're going to say 10 meters per second squared, just for simplicity matter. So the math isn't so tough. Um, OK, so we know that's gravity. So we'll probably use this equation right here, because that is all the units we're, we have I'm looking for. So we're trying to find x after our velocity initial, which is 20 meters per second, times our time, which is 2 seconds, plus 1 half, uh, A, which is going to be, and here's the tricky part. In this, gravity, it's, um, if gravity, if we just put this 10 meters per second squared, right, like that on this, then gravity would actually be accelerating it upwards. And uh, you probably know that that's, uh, that's not how gravity works. It, um, it pulls down to the Earth. So in this case, our gravity is going to be negative 10 meters per second because we're looking at our system this way and gravity is pu pushes this way, which on a graph, you know, if you, if you go that way, it's negative. So that's why our gravity is going to be negative 10 meters per second times our time squared, which is going to be 2 seconds, so it's going to be 4 seconds squared. So let's just uh, multiply this out. So um, x is going to equal 40 meters, because that's how far it would initially go. And then we're going to have to see plus the effects of gravity, which are going to be plus negative um, 20 meters. And that's just gotten by like all these multiplying out and all that. So uh, after two seconds, it will be 20 meters, 20 meters above our head. Okay, so uh, let's do it for four seconds. So we have x, as we're trying to find. Our, velocity, our initial velocity is still 20 meters per second, but in this time, where it's going for four seconds. Sorry, it's four. Plus one half, again, negative 10 is working against us meters per second squared times, and this time it's going to be 16 s squared because this is four, um, 4 squared, not 2. So if we multiply all these out again, we'll get 80 up here, 80 meters, seconds cancel out, plus negative uh, 80 meters. So after 4 seconds, it will be zero meters above our head. So it'll be right back to where it started, not landing in the hand. And other than that, it'll get more negative from there and stuff. So um, let me do one more problem. Let's say this is kind of an interesting one. Right. A couple people have recommended I do. All right, so let's say we have a table here with a ball, and the ball has a velocity of 4 meters per second. And this table is 1.25 meters high. All right, and we have to find how far this ball will get once it falls off the table. So we're trying to find, you know, how far 
what this what this is, how far it is from the table, basically. So to do this, we have to do uh, two different things. So first of all, we have to find how long it takes for the ball to hit the ground, which isn't hard because in this case, all the ball's uh, movement right now, it has uh, it's all vertical. It is no y whatsoever. So when we talk when we find how long it takes to hit the ground, um, we know our ground is 1.25 meters and that's going to equal one half negative 10 meters per second t squared. And you're probably going to wonder where I got this equation from, and, but you might notice some similarities to the equation we just used, the x equals v naught t plus one half a t squared. And yes, this, this is the equation I'm using. It's just we don't have any y velocity, so we don't really care about this right now. Or we care about it, but we, uh, it's, it's not being affected. And this is our distance, so our distance from the bottom. And we're trying to find how long it will take to hit this distance when it's accelerating downwards at a rate of 10 meters per second. Okay, so let's do this math out really quick. Um, this is going to end up equaling... Um, 0.25 equals t squared. Um, so t equals 0.5 meters. I mean seconds. Sorry. So, in other words, when we do this equation out, this ball will take 0.5 seconds to hit the ground if it's accelerating at Earth's gravity. So now that we have how long it will take to fall. We also have how long it'll take before it'll hit this spot, or before it'll um, hit this uh, this y point. So now we need to do a different equation, which will be actually the same equation, just uh, there's a different part. We ha we're trying to find x, and we have v naught and t. Now, you might be wondering again where I got this, uh, this is 5 by the way, this is the 0.5 seconds. You're wondering where I got this equation again. Now, this is, uh, we're doing vice versa now. We're doing uh, the same equation, except for now we don't have any vertical or uh, horizontal acceleration. So this part is negligible, but we're using this part because we have a vertical uh, velocity. So we're just doing this. And we just multiply this out. And just a simple multiplication problem. And then you will end up getting, cancel the seconds out, um, 2 meters. And that's how far it will get there. And that's how you do projectile problems. I uh, hope it's been helpful. If you have any questions about any more physics problems, uh, let me know. I'll make a video about it. And I'll see you next lesson. All right, see you later, guys.